In this tutorial, we'll learn how to merge 2D animation with live action footage, even if your camera is moving around. Tip -tot. Hello everybody, and welcome back to Tipta and to this complete animation course. In this course, we'll be using Adobe Animate and Adobe After Effects to merge 2D animation with live action film, along the lines of Space Jam or Who Framed Roger Rabbit. In this tutorial, two of three, we'll cover moving camera shots and how to track complex character motion. In an earlier episode, we covered static camera shots and the basics of merging 2D and live action. So I recommend watching that video first. In later episodes, we'll cover shots where your character interacts with the environment. We'll be working on animating this short film where a little fella climbs out of his tree to go and search for berries for dinner. You can download the footage to follow along from my website, the link is in the description, or you can of course shoot your own footage using your phone. So let's get cracking. First let's look at this shot where our character is climbing down the tree and slips falling out of frame. We've got our image sequence in Adobe Animate and this time I've just got a few frames. An initial frame where he's clinging to the bark, a frame where he's reaching down for the next grip, a frame where he's clinging with one hand after slipping, a frame where he's dropping through the air. These frames are just for reference, we'll be recreating them in a moment, but it is useful to start with them roughly in place. Hit Control Enter to test your shot and create a SWIFT. Remember to uncheck Include Hidden Layers and Compress in the Publish settings as well as Optimize for After Effects. In After Effects, we'll import our SWIFT by dragging it into the comp. Then, with our footage selected, we'll create a new track on a piece of the tree that remains in the shot from start to finish. Place the crosshair over this point and increase the bounding boxes to fit that area. The inner box tells the tracker what to look for, whereas the outer box tells the tracker how far to look for that information each frame. Basically, your second box needs to be larger depending on how much your footage moves. We'll also need to check rotation, which gives us a second tracking point. Place this close to where your character is positioned too. Click the track forward button to track your footage. Just like last time, we'll add a new null object with Ctrl Alt Shift and Y, then edit the target of the track and choose the null. Make sure you click apply after clicking OK to convert your track to keyframes. The reason we've moved to After Effects so early this time is because we need a better relationship between the frames we create and the character's position on the tree. Essentially, it's going to be much more noticeable if he's slipping about all over the place, so we're going to bring a reference back into Adobe Animate. Let's reduce the opacity of the Swift layer, and on a new layer, grab the Circle tool. Draw a circle on the hand and feet positions of the initial pose. Parent this layer to the null object. Then in a different color, do the same thing for the second pose where he's dangling. Basically these will act as a reference point for where our character connects with the tree. And we need this for each time that he is in contact with the tree. We don't need a reference for him dropping between positions or off screen because we'll be using a different technique to track him to footage this time. Essentially, we're going to create two anchor points where our character touches the tree and animate him in place around these anchors. When he's falling, instead of following the footage manually, we'll just move the whole swift layer around to save time and effort. Otherwise, we'd have to animate every single frame, which is very time consuming and boring. Also, it's more chances for it to go wrong. Temporarily hide your swift, then using Adobe Media Encoder, re-export your composition with the guides to replace the same image sequence you imported into Adobe Animate earlier. Again, if you're having trouble following and you haven't watched the first episode, go and watch that one now. It's worth it, trust me. Once rendered, Animate should update the library automatically. If it doesn't, just select all your images, right click and choose update. Now you've got a perfect reference for where your character comes into contact with the tree. Now save your animate document with a new name, such as shot3 underscore a. Let's go to the first frame of our footage and freeze the background footage in place. We're going to animate our character up until the point that he lets go and begins his free fall into the next pose. At this point, we don't care about the original positions of any of the frames. We're animating everything around the reference markers we made. It should look something like this. Once you've added a few frames, Test it by hitting Control Enter. 
bring that new Swift into After Effects. Now let's hide the old Swift and parent shot three underscore A to the null object so that our character follows the track. Looking good. At the point where he lets go, we're going to keyframe the position of the Swift and drop him down into position until his hand lines up with the next contact point. Remember, this is all rough for now. Let's just get it down and worry about the details later. As they say, you can edit shit, you can't edit nothing. Let's go back to Adobe Animate, save a copy of our document at shot3 underscore B. Now let's do the same thing for this shot. Freeze the reference footage on a convenient frame and continue the animation from him grabbing the trunk. Animate up until the point he lets go, then create a new Swift by hitting Control Enter. Bring that into After Effects and parent it to the null object at the point where he grabs the trunk again. Now he's tracked to the footage as he swings from the second branch. At this point, you may have to adjust the first drop to maintain the momentum. This has saved us a whole bunch of time by allowing us to still animate every second or third frame instead of every single frame to follow our reference shapes. You could do it this way, and this is called manual tracking, but it's very time consuming and boring. Now we just have to keyframe the position of this Swift to drop out of frame and we're good to go. Obviously, this isn't done. I added frames until the animation was smooth, then went back and forth between Adobe Animate and After Effects, tweaking the final frame poses until I was happy. If you want to see processes like this in real time, I'm working on this project on my weekly live streams. If you want to catch one of those whilst live, I stream every Friday from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. UK time. And if you're watching this fairly soon after it's uploaded, I'm probably still working on these shots during the current streams. So it's a good place to ask questions. Okay, so we're roughly happy with the movement, but this time we definitely need to do more with the lighting and shadows. We have patches of sunlight that cross over parts of our character and the contact shadows of the bark. So let's take a look at that. I'll add in basic color in Animate again and bring that Swift into After Effects. I'll add a similar inner shadow as last time, setting it to color burn, but this time putting the angle to be directly down as we have light coming in from the top left and top right, causing the shadows along the bottom ridges of the wood. Next, we'll create the shadows. You need to do this for each of the two Swifts, A and B, obviously. Let's duplicate our Swift layer and go to our effects and presets panel and search for fill. We'll drag and drop that onto our duplicate Swift and set the color to black, or maybe even eyedropper the darkest shadow we can find on screen. Nothing's ever pure black after all. Move it down slightly and add a Gaussian blur to soften it up a bit. Then reduce the opacity until it looks more natural. Finally, changing the blend mode to multiply means that as it moves over the lighter areas of the background, it will look less intense. We need to mask out the shadow when his legs extend past the tree. Add a new mask, the frame before, somewhere off to the side of the legs, and set it to subtract. Then keyframe the mask path on the next keyframes and move the mask over the legs. You'll need to have preserve constant vertex and feather point count when editing masks unchecked in After Effects preferences for this to work. Keep keyframing when necessary for the few frames that his legs stick out and you should be done fairly quickly. I just needed two keyframes. I added a quick bit of color correction to the footage too, applying a curves and hue saturation effect just to give the shot a pop of color. As our character drops off the tree, I want him to look like he's moving farther away from the trunk. So let's keyframe the character's scale at the top of his drop, move to the end and scale him up slightly. To make it look like he's falling further away, we'll keyframe the position of the shadow layer then as he's falling, we'll move it slightly further away from him to reinforce the idea he's increasing the distance from the tree. Okay, that's looking good, but let's deal with the patch of light that passes over our character as he drops from screen. Let's select the pen tool and draw a rough path over the light patches. Let's duplicate our Swift layer and place it above the light shape layer. Then set the track map of the shape layer to be alpha matte. This will use the contents of the Swift as a mask meaning it only appears when our character is over it. Set the blending mode of the layer to overlay and drop the opacity a little. And now when our character drops into this patch of light, he gets brighter. Perfect. Then add a fast box blur to soften the edges. Make sure you parent the layer to your null object too. That's looking pretty good. And you can see how this anchor point tracking technique can be applied to a variety of scenarios. 
So that's it for this episode. I hope you found it useful and you're having fun with the series so far. In the next episode, we'll be dealing with what to do when your character needs to interact with the environment, such as here when he's picking berries. So make sure you've subscribed and rung the notification bell so you don't miss out on the next episode. It's also a great way to help support the channel to help make sure I can keep making videos like this in the future. I can't wait to see what you come up with, so remember to tag me with whatever you create on social media. That's at TipTutZone. Thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time on TipTut. I'd like to thank my awesome channel members who support me every month via YouTube membership. If you'd like to support and get some exclusive perks, click that join button below like these lovely people. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.